like I had this kid come and visit me a while back and he had never left his home state and he was I think he was 19 and he was overprotected and over sheltered and he was a smart kid and so of course he also thought that the world really hadn't appreciated his gifts which is a very common feeling for smart kids who who aren't getting anywhere right they get really angry about that and then he decided that he was going to move out of his house and he took a job as a dishwasher and he said he tried to do a good job as a dishwasher it's like good that's some humility it's just a dishwashing job but you know you can be a good dishwasher and then the restaurant runs better and then it's kind of fun as long as the people you're working with are half decent you can make good social relationships and then you can learn to be social which was happening to him and then maybe they let you be a short order cook you know and, and you got a bit of a clue and then you have a bit of money and you have a little independence and it's a lot better than being at home and being bitter and resentful and immature you know it's just a dishwashing job well that's the wrong way of thinking about it it's like it's it's the first door that's open to you you know and then he came up to Toronto he'd, he'd never been out of his home state so it was a big deal for him to come to another city and when he first came to talk to me it was outside of one of my lectures he couldn't even speak he was so nervous because he had pretty high levels of social anxiety so he was tongue-tied and I invited him to come over to my house to talk to him because I knew there was something up with him and he told me this story you know and I thought well you know that's the beginnings of a heroic journey he was able to humble himself enough so that you know if you're low if you're in a low place, it's a low door that's going to open. And you might think, I'm too high to crawl through that low door. Jung said, Carl Jung said, people, modern people don't see God because they don't look low enough. I really like that idea. But that's it. If you're in a low place, the opportunity that presents itself to you is going to be low. And it's going to be very tempting to you because you're arrogant, resentful to say, well, that's not good enough for me. It's like, well, do you have an alternative? If, if you don't have an alternative, then an inch up is up, and it's the right trajectory, you know, and so that's humility, that's humility, it's like, you're low, you take what, you take what's given to you, and you see if you can make it work, and the thing is, that works way faster than people think, even, because I worked as a dishwasher when I was a kid, you know, for a, year, for a year or so, and it was really hard to begin with because I didn't know what I was doing and the German chef, who was kind of a tough guy, just let me flounder around for two weeks to see if I would quit. So I was there till like three in the morning, and I was 13, I think. I couldn't wash all these damn dishes. I thought it was impossible. I told my dad at one point, I said, I don't know if I can do this. It's like I'm working as hard as I can and they keep piling up, you know, but I didn't stop. And then the German cook, you know, who had been treating me pretty harshly, at one day he said, okay, I'll show you how to do this. And then he showed me how to organize the dishes and everything. And it was like, that was not no problem. I could do it in like 10% of the time. So then I cleaned up the rest of the kitchen. And I had a good time mucking about with the chefs and we played around a lot back there. And I ended up working as a short order cook and I learned to cook and all of that. And that was a good part of my adolescence. But, but the thing is, so the thing is, is that those trivial jobs, it's the conception of their triviality that makes them trivial. They're not trivial, not if you do them right. And if you're around people who have any sense, you know, sensible people are always looking around for other people who can do things right. And if they see you trying to do things right, the probability that they'll open a door for you is virtually 100%, because it's kind of rare, you know? So they're gonna be skeptical to begin with, to see you gotta prove your mettle, let's say. But as soon as you do, they'll think, okay, well, we'll give this kid a little bit more opportunity and see what happens. And, you know, to not think that's how the world works is to be extraordinarily cynical, because that is how it works in, in a functioning society. Yeah, I mean, I work with businesses all the time, and there is they, they, anybody that is just above normal competency in anything, anybody that's going to try, anybody that's going to put effort in, they, they, they love those people. And those people are going to do well, and you're absolutely right that doors are absolutely going to open for them if they uh, do what they're trying to do to the best of their ability and doing a competent job at it. Well, the other thing that's interesting is what happens to people who aren't trying, because what happens to them is like they're in a place where there's a thousand doors in front of them that are invisible. They don't know the doors are there, and they could either be opened or closed. And so if they're one of these people 
who is going above and beyond the call of duty, unless the organization is entirely corrupt, right? And that happens sometimes. Then there are people who are watching and they'll start to open these invisible doors. And then all of a sudden the person has opportunities in front of them. And they don't even know why some of the time, right? Because someone said, you know, gave a positive word to someone else and said, well, you could take a look at this kid. And, and so these doors open. And then the people who are in there grudgingly and, and bitterly, it's like people watch that and they're the people who are the gatekeepers and they just close the doors. And then the person looks up and there's nothing in front of them. There's no open doors at all. And, they, and then, then they curse God, you know, for making such a miserable cosmos. It's like, no, you just don't understand what, you just don't understand what happened. It's like you, the fruits of your bitterness, had, your bitterness manifested fruit. You don't even know it. You've delimited your options in a terrible way. And you've closed, you know, you're, you're, you're walking down, you're walking between cliff walls and they're getting closer and closer and closer together. And then you'll be stuck. And you'll think, how the hell did this happen? And it happened because you didn't, you didn't avail yourself of the opportunities that presented themselves to you. So, you know, that's horrible, but that's, that's how it is. I get asked uh, quite often, um, you know, this guy got promoted and I should have gotten promoted. What should I do now? Or this person isn't carrying their load and, and, and they're, they, they think I should do their work. What should I do now? And, you know, the, the answer is, yeah, Some, someone wants you to do their work. Do their work. Yes, yes, do their yes, work. Yes, I'll yes. do that all day long. Yeah, no kidding. D yeah, you, you, you don't want to do your job. That's fine. I'll yeah, do it. Yeah. yeah. You want, and, and actually, I, got, I just answered a question where somebody said, the, the guy's a friend of mine and he's not carrying his load, what should I do? And I said, well, how, how about you help him? What's going on at home? Is he going through a divorce? Has he got issues? Is the kid sick? How about you help him and say, hey, let me, let me take that off your plate right now. Because in two months or six months, you might be the person that needs help. You might be the person with a sick child. But regardless of that, maybe he's just as lazy and maybe he shouldn't be your friend and maybe eventually he won't be your friend, but Nonetheless, the solution is the same. If you don't want to do your work, that's fine. I'll do yeah, it for well, you. Yeah, that's, well, that's such a funny thing. That's exactly right. Because, you know, what you want to do in, in your job is make yourself indispensable, right? And the way you make yourself indispensable is by being indispensable. And the way you do that is by doing a bunch of things that if they're not done, catastrophe occurs. And that's exactly right. So if there's someone around you and they're abdicating your res their responsibility and you can pick it up, it's like, what an opportunity. You know, it's, you think, well, I'm not going to get credit for it. It's like, well, first of all, there's lots of different forms of credit, but you learn. And then when the company shrinks and they're looking at who to keep, you know, they think, oh, well, it turns out you're doing all sorts of things. We can't do without you. That's not what we expected. We can't do without you. Here's some more things you could do. You know, and then you're also in a position to bargain. You can say, well, look, you know, um, in order for me to keep doing this level of responsibility, you know, I need to be paid more because I have other options or, or because it's just or because that will make me more efficient. But then you've got some power too because they need you. And so indispensability, and that's power. Indispensability is power, not tyranny. <laughs> so.